What's going on guys? Welcome to SmartHelping.com. I'm Jay and I got a really cool model here. It's uh, the first sensitivity table I've done. It's really awesome. It's for IRR sensitivity and this is for a real estate model. Um, so the, uh, the, the sensitivity tables you can do, it's based on uh, the data ribbon at the top, what if, what if analysis and data table. And you could use them for all sorts of models to isolate variables and see how it changes over time. So we'll go over this in a bit, but let's look at the, the, the main model here is for real estate. I try to make the most simple acquisition model I could think of with the everything, all the inputs are right here on this one tab. And you can see the monthly cash flows and then the annual cash flows here. You can go up to 240 months. So you just define any acquisition costs here, let's say a million dollars. Uh, maybe I have some other build out costs or something else, maybe 90,000. Um, then I say the percentage of total acquisition costs financed. Let's say maybe it's 60%. So there's my loan amount, closing costs or some percentage of that. I have loan terms, let's say maybe a 6.5% uh, loan over 30 years. There's my monthly payments. This has to be 12, 12 payments per year. Um, We've got our total equity requirements, which is just taking the total acquisition costs less the financing amount plus any loan costs. Um, then we've got rent. So really simply just total starting annual rent. Um, and then you can put in your starting vacancy expectations and other income. And then you'll get the rent for year one, which is this one, whatever you put into here. And then you could change the rent per year on this rate. And you'll see the rent changes over time based on that logic. And then the, the vacancy is based on whatever vacancy rate. We have gross income, uh, operating expenses. You can just put in a detail here on all the different monthly fixed operating expenses. Or sorry, annual. These are annual. So annual expenses. This is the total annual amount. Expense growth rate. And then here you get the uh, operating expenses over time and you see that changes every 12 months it goes up by whatever percentage you put in there so that's the annual this is converting everything to monthly we've got net operating income you got your loan closing costs here's all the cash flow detail on a monthly basis um, we have the exit month down here you could pick any exit month you know 240 or 60 or whatever um, any month you want and then you could do uh, selling fees that'll slightly lower all the IRRs um, and exit cap rate so once you put in all these different assumptions you can edit all the cells in yellow you'll see the monthly based annual IRR I also did an annual summary that has all the initial costs and financing here and the IRR based on annual periods, which would be slightly different than the monthly one. Um, but this just gives you a nice annual view, up to 20 years. And the really awesome thing about this model is you can do sensitivities. So you can change what these are, but in general, the first table is gonna show you what your IRR of the whole project is gonna be using monthly period logic for the IRR calculation and cash in and out per period based on a changing cap rate and a changing vacancy rate. So here, obviously, 1% vacancy is really good. 2.5% exit cap means a higher sell price. So this is the highest IRR. That makes sense. As you go up the cap rate slide, that's lower purchase or lower sales prices. So your IRR is going to go down. And then as you go down this way, the vacancy rates are going up, so that's lower rent, lower cash flow, and lower IRR going down. Uh, you can change these rates to whatever you want. It doesn't have to be exactly increments that I have for here and here. These are all editable. Like, for example, I could say 75, and now that updates, or 60, or 50, and you see these updates. You can also update any of these variables and the tables will update upon the change of the input. Um, so the first table does exit cap, vacancy. Here's all the IRRs. 
running through this whole model, all the logic, but just isolating these variables. Now, why this is really cool is the only other way to do this is you'd have to make, you know, 50 different tabs of these models and then just change these variables to see the output IRR. Instead, this is so much more efficient, you can just use a data table to isolate the variables and see how your IRR changes if you just change these variables and everything else is the same in the model. The second table I did was, um, I'm, I was trying to think of the most important uh, variables to isolate. So I did vacancy again going down, and then I did exit month going across. So if you held for 24 months versus, you know, 48 months, 72, 96, 120, 240 months, and you can see how the IRR is going to go down the longer you hold. It's also going to go down the higher the vacancy rate. And um, obviously the the IRR is taking into account the time value of money and depending on how the rent growth is structured and all the expenses and exit cap rate. Um, this is basically saying that the exit cap is pretty high compared to the other input. So the further out you have that exit cap, the lower the total IRR is going to be. Now, if this were a higher cap rate, let's say 8%, um, you're still going to see, no matter what, it's going to go down over time. But here's a much bigger gradient than, you know, 5%. Well, 165 to, I haven't looked at these numbers. This is a 3x difference. This is a 6x difference. Yeah, so the, the higher the sales price, the bigger the impact on the change. You know, if you had a really high 50%, um, essentially, now you don't even get to a positive IRR until month 168 because of the rent growth. Um, and this is basically just saying you're only profitable, speaking in terms of the internal rate of return, if you hold for over 168 months because then the rent growth is high enough to where it starts to repay the, the initial investment and your, your cap rate, I mean, your exit value here is just going to be really low at a 50% cap. You know, it's just 350,000 in month period, 240. The present value of that's going to be really low and that's what the IRR is looking at. So there you have it. So if we go to 40, 30, you can see now the IRR is going higher the longer you hold, but at some point, or I'm sorry, the, the, based on the cap rate variance. And you can see cap rates here. You can up, see, now what I might do, what would be interesting is maybe uh, exit cap rate versus the exit month. I might add that sensitivity actually, that looks interesting, but let's keep going down here. 20% cap, you're still getting higher, 15. Now you're starting to get a little bit lower. You're going higher until month one, 40, 168, well, no, 192, he's slightly higher in month 240. Let's keep going down. Let's go to 12. Now you can see definitely a difference. We start at 43 and just go straight down. And that's because now the, the, the exit value is, is a value that has a bigger impact on the actual present value of all these cash flows. So now it's going to have a much more impact. And the further out that amount hits, the less impact it has. If we go down to like, you know, eight, you're going to really see the big difference there. Um, yeah, I think actually, so before I go on, remember you can buy this template. Uh, the link will be in the description box below. It's on smarthelping.com. It'll be listed in the real estate uh, templates. Um, this will just be a one-time fee of $45 if you want to download the sheet, um, which I feel is very fair. There's a lot of a lot of work and, and knowledge has gone into building this. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe to the video as well. Um, okay, we'll, we'll add one more sensitivity table. So what I want to do, I'll just go copy, paste, and this is going to be exit cap versus exit month. Now I think this is interesting. So this is going to be exit cap rate. Um, 
it probably if you were actually doing this you probably wouldn't have such um, big differences maybe seven maybe something like that and then exit month could be the same now we still hold our our table here now the, what we change though is let's highlight this go to data table <clears throat> now our rows are the exit month and our columns are the exit cap rate now we have a little bit different here so we can see okay what happens as the cap rate changes and the exit month changes very interesting um, so obviously the lowest cap rate means you're getting a ton of money back in in 24 months that's going to give you a huge impact uh, getting all that money in month 240 you know the rent is increasing a bit but still not enough to make the IRR higher over time so the further out you go your IRR is getting lower and as the cap rate rises you're also getting a lower IRR so here this is saying this number is like exit 120 cap rate of 9% you're going to have a 25.8% cap rate and you can see that number here the project IRR here will change so if I go and put exit month of 120 cap rate of 9% you can see look here 25.8 which is exactly this number here so that's the beauty of this um, template in, in these data tables is you can isolate um, and I think the IRR is one of the best things to isolate the best output calculation to isolate you could also do one on net present value uh, but I like IRRR uh, and we can go go against all these different things all right very cool. Uh, let's make this a little bit. Let's start at month 36 here. And I don't want to see a div error. Let's make this a little bit smaller, maybe 22. There we go. Just so there's a number. But you could adjust these however you want. And, you know, really good analysis. Really good. That's a lot easier than like figuring out a number, changing some inputs, figure, seeing what it is now, changing inputs, seeing what it is now. Instead, um, you can configure your deal and then isolate variables and see the output IRR, which is a really good summary of the cash flows of the deal. Alrighty, like I said, download the, the template in the description box below. There'll be a link to smarthelping.com and I'll see you guys on the next one.